Hello everyone, welcome to Liquid Assets TV, the internet's most entertaining and educational cocktail and spirit show. I'm your host, Jerry McGill, aka Dr. Drinks. Got my friend Darren Whitaker here, he's also the sales manager for Liquid Assets. And today, this is going to be kind of a happy show, but a little bit of sad too. So um, this show is kind of dedicated to a friend of mine. Uh, we just lost him and he passed away, he was a mentor for me. He's the guy that actually created this whole category that we're going to talk about today. So um, let me back up a little bit and tell you a little bit of a uh, story about him. His name is Ted O'Toole. He, or it's Thaddeus John O'Toole, and um, he created this product called Los Cabos years ago, and I don't, I'm not even sure how far back it goes. And um, he's been, was in the liquor business for many, many years, and a very good guy, good friend, and the product's, uh, were created for a category, a niche, that he was um, really responsible for creating. And he had to go through a lot of legal issues with ATF and people like that to get this product on the market. And what it is, it's a wine-based cocktail, and that's what we c consider the niche. Now, this is Los Cabos was actually taken, uh, you took the agave plant, the same thing they make tequila from, it's fermented, instead of distilled. So it's fermented into a wine made from the agave plant, bottled up in the percentage that is legal in the particular state. In Texas, we're here, it's a 17% uh, in most counties. Some counties are 14%. Uh, a lot of the, a lot of the uh, states are 20%. So anyway, he created this, went on to do a couple more. And this is a Sobolov, which is quote unquote a vodka type, a rum type. Uh, there's a triple sack, there's, this is Kalana, which is like Kahlua, and then an Amaretta, and then a couple of schnapps flavors. So, But anyway, we lost Ted on September the 8th of this year, we're here just a few uh, weeks ago, and I'm a little, I'm a little sad about it because he was a, really a mentor to me and taught me a lot about it, and it's been a very emotional thing for me uh, here the last uh, week or so. And um, So anyway, it's, <laughs> I'm sorry. It's, he, he's just a really good guy, and I am really miss him, and, I, you know, there was times where I'd pick up the phone and call him and say, hey, Ted, I got a question for you about this or that, and he really helped me through it and actually got me to distribute these products in Texas. So, um, so anyway, we sure miss you, Ted, and uh, um, he's got two daughters. Uh, one of them was in Colorado, and I think the other one was in California, and, and I'm sure they miss him as much as I do, if probably more, but, um, you know, we miss him, and we're really going to hate to see him go. So, but let's carry on with his tradition and carry on his products, and um, let's talk a little bit about them. So, Darren, how you doing today, bud? I'm not doing bad. Uh, you know, I want to send my uh, heartfelt uh, condolences out to his family. I never personally met Ted, but I can certainly say I have been living in his legacy uh, since he has created this product. And uh, you know, this has been seven, going on eight years for me right now with uh, Liquid Assets and. Uh, you know, repping these products and uh, really teaching what uh, Ted set out to do, and that was to to bring a broader range of, um, well, I can't say spirits, but a broader uh, range of beverages to restaurants that uh, couldn't afford or didn't have the luxury of full liquor licenses. Or, did, or, or didn't want the legal, the legal, yeah. legal, uh, legal issues, issues with it. So in a lot of states, it's very expensive to get those types of licenses. Uh, even here in Texas, I mean, just now, now you have to sign up for two years at a time, and that is a significant Big financial yeah, yeah, investment significant. That, uh, that a lot of restaurants, new restaurants, can't afford. So they go for the BG route. Well, the reason, the main, the other reason I want to do this product is obviously is the reason we're running a little late running this show today is because Darren's been out m handling a bunch of leads coming in from it. We just... Because of this, uh, because of Ted passing, it brought the brought the memory back to me of how long we've been doing these products and how much we've sold of them. I can't tell you the number of thousands and thousands of cases of this stuff that we've sold. And so we ran a promotional thing out with a uh, with a mailings and did some of that. And we really, you know, it was a we did a m some mailings out and it's just the phone's been ringing off the hook and. I think it's old Ted out there pro probing, probing well, people. Know, Ted gave me a sore throat <laughs> last night because by the time I got home after four clients yesterday, yeah. uh, which, by the way, all signed up for the program, uh, it just uh, my voice was dead. Yeah. I, was, I was talked out. And you know 
for me to say that. <laughs> that's a lie. That's a lie. That, <laughs> I agree. That, I agree that with is you. a great deal so, to be able to say. Um, let's talk a little bit about how this is how this is legal a little bit. So sure. Um, let not only not not only the Los Cabos, which is the number one priority. Let's talk about the legalities of it too, because. Like I said, in some states, you have a full liquor license or you have a beer and wine license. The people that, like we said, don't have the, ex the money to do this or, or don't even really want to, the desire right. to, as we find here, a lot of people just, they just don't want to deal with it. And for those of you that say, oh, man, wine, you know, we've tried those, we use white wines, all this, this is totally different. <laughs> and and we, go a ahead. point of clarification real quick, we use the term wine. Because it is a legal term, and it's one that when we explain to somebody what wine means, the conjures up the image of fermented over distilled. But let us be clear, especially on Los Cabos, it is not a white wine that's been flavored or a red wine that's been flavored. Uh, which, as you know, before Ted came along is what some people were trying to do, creating the famous winerita, if you will. Not just because it was made out of wine and they were using a Shiraz or maybe a Pinot Grigio or just a cheap white. But it was really, we termed it that, I think, mainly because of the customers whining about how bad they tasted. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, I always like to clarify that with people because they do ask. And uh, since this topic, obviously, uh, is, is browbeaten into my mind, especially this week, um, it is a fermented product over a distilled, which is why refer, we refer to it as a wine, not because it's something like a cheap box wine that uh, yeah. is just being put in a different bottle. Well. The whole process of making tequila, you take the agave plant, and the whole process of it is to actually ferment the whole thing first. first. Then, it has, then it actually goes through the distillation process. So it's got to be fermented first. Well, instead of taking it on through the distillation process, it's just fermented and, and cleaned up and bottled, and that's how it does, and then cut by the percentages by whatever your state is. So... My best description when I describe it to somebody, and it's almost a negative, but you really don't have a choice if you're in this type of category to use this type of product. It tastes like a watered-down tequila. And when I say that, I don't mean it in a negative term. The, it's an the actually good well, term. Yeah, but it, it, when you taste it, you go, wow, that really does taste like tequila. And smell. But it, oh, the smell is just is wonderful. So um, now that we've talked about that a little bit, let's do this. Tell me how we go about making a particular drink uh, with this and because people are going to say well it's going to be weak and my customers aren't going to like it and that kind of thing so play devil's advocate so i'm saying sure. hey this is going to this is wine it's going to taste weak how you know w w any way to solve that problem well first of all most of the clients <laughs> that use this utilize it in a mixed product with some type of flavor whether it's a margarita yeah, or they're a not margarita. doing shots with right. it right <laughs> yeah. though you there can. have been restaurants yeah. that, that offer that the that. shot to go along with the plate but that being said, uh, yes, you are correct. Uh, straight numbers up, math, 17% uh, versus 40%, obviously there's a difference. But at least in the state of Texas and most other states that offer this BG license, what makes it kind of cool is that uh, RTABC, for example, does not actually regulate the finished alcohol percentage of a finished drink. Okay, so basically what that means is our clients, my clients, your clients, uh, they use basically about 2.25 times as much of our fermented agave wine right. in a standard margarita or mixed beverage as you would hard liquor. So what that actually does, it puts our final proofage in the drink pretty much equal to the restaurant it's using 40% tequila. Yeah. Well, in some cases, it's a little over. Mm -hmm. I've got one guy that uses actually enough that he's sitting at about a 42% um, accumulation of, of finished alcohol and it, and it works out real well for him his customers like it and uh, they've actually told him that you know they feel the same way after three of his margaritas that they do it you know some of the places that are actually going hard to get into that yeah, but, but, <laughs> but anyway I understand so the point is you just you're not regulated by how much of it you can put in there so correct let's let's say we had a frozen margarita machine here and we were gonna make five gallons of margaritas sure. we'd put eight, eight. bottles of eight. this for a five gallon batch and then we'd turn around, add margarita mix, either the uh, margarita mix like this or one of our dry powders. We prefer the uh, most of the time our liquid Great assets dry. top uh, top shelf margarita mix because it already and it already has triple sec. You don't necessarily have to add this product to it, but if you want to smooth it out, and make it a little can. sweeter, you Absolutely. can. So, so we'll add eight bottles of this, or you can add six and two, 
or seven and one, however the combination you right. want to do it. But eight bottles makes it really tasty. Right, and well, and keep in mind that the average, again, full liquor restaurant that would be doing the same five gallons would add three to four. Would three, three and a half is about the average because they're they're going for profitability there, obviously. Yeah, profit. something like that. So again, you're looking at two times as much. Actually, like I said, right around two point two times as much to get the finished alcohol percentage in that mixed beverage up there. Yeah. Okay. Now. Let's talk about this a little bit, too. Now, we obviously have other flavors here. So we've got a Sobolov, so you could do, uh, which is like uh, vodka. So you could do Bloody Marys here. You could do screwdrivers. Uh, yeah, screwdrivers, anything uh, like that. This is Coral Reef, which would be like rum. Kind of a rum profile, right. So you could right. do, you know, daiquiris, daiquiris, daiquiris pina, pina coladas, coladas yeah, the know, whole. That stuff. Kalana is like Kahlua, so you can do a Kalana and cream, and you do mud slides and things like that. There's also an amaretta to do, you know, like an amaretta, amaretta sours, freeze or amaretta or freezes, or yeah, something yeah, like you that. You can so. use that with a really good, well, one of our really good sour mixes, and actually come up with an awesome tasting drink yeah. uh, that people, again, just don't realize what they're drinking when it's fermented over distilled, and they wouldn't know the difference. Right. So, so okay. And then when there's a couple of schnapps flavors um, here. So, the products are and exceptional to be used in uh, places that only have beer and wine licenses. Um, you got anything else you can think of that I'm not thinking about off the top of your head? No, I mean, I, I think we've covered it. I mean, like I said, when Ted first set the whole idea up, I mean, obviously Los Cabos is the Cadillac product, and he moved it out, and his, you know, ideas and his innovation allowed him to spread the product line out to fill other desires mm -hmm. for his clients already. Uh, but no, I mean, you, I think we've pretty much hit the high points of it. Uh, in terms of what you can use it for. Oh, I know what I was going to do. Let, let's tell them the story about what we did at the trade show, the Texas restaurant show two years ago, and doing the taste test. Well, we had the, the full liquor yeah, and yeah. the wine. We, we did the Texas Restaurant Association trade show, and I think it was here in Houston. I think it was probably two years ago. Two years or ago, maybe. yeah, down at the Georgia yeah. Brown. Yeah, and so we set it up, and this is kind of cool. We took two margarita machines, and the ex same exact mix, so there was no differences in the mix whatsoever. Liquid assets top shelf. Yeah, the top shelf Our mix favorite. in both of them. We used a uh, we used Los Cabos in one side, and then we turned around and used uh, just a normal off the shelf. It wasn't a bad tequila, but it wasn't just a really really high. Consider a well. End. Yeah, a well, a well, a well tequila. tequila. And we put them side by side in in machines, and we had customers come by. And we were one of them that really came in. We're, it's a big sign said take the taste test, you know, like the, the Pepsi or Coke challenge, challenge or whatever it was. So we had them do it, and we were stunned. I mean, we expected them to like the Los Cabos and not really notice any difference, but the reception that we got from them was the Los Cabos was smoother. It didn't have a harsh aftertaste, uh, aftertaste to it. Um, they, the comment was, well, the other one does taste a little bit stronger, but not much. But they like the Los Cabos better because it was so much smoother. Mm -hmm. And the comments that we made to the people was, if it's smoother, what's going to happen? Well, that means their customers are going to drink one. Or, instead of coming in, drinking one and go, wow, that's pretty strong. I'm only going to have one. Mm -hmm. The customer, the, our customer and their customer ends up getting a better thing because they'll order two or three. Well, and what we look at, and you know me, I'm a numbers person. Sure. I, I crunch numbers. I crunch trends. That's what I do. Uh, the average Mexican restaurant sales on margaritas is an average of five uh, for two people during the course of dinner. And it's kind of oh, funny yeah. how that breaks. Yeah, it, 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 I, trust me, the way this breaks down is kind of interesting. It's the female, the wife, the girlfriend, that ends up getting the three versus the male two. And, uh, and the reason they do that is generally the males are driving, so they mm -hmm. cut themselves off. I thought that was a real interesting statistic. Uh, we're seeing the same thing out of the wine margaritas as well. So, again... You know, it, it, it kind of goes. We're in the same genre, and people just can't tell the difference. You know, most people that drink margaritas aren't drinking to get drunk. Let's face it. They're not trying to catch a buzz. Well, the restaurateurs that we deal with, that, that's, they, they want to serve a drink, quality drink, goes out. They're not looking for power drinkers. No. They're not looking for the 99-cent margarita guy that sits there and drinks 10. Right. And, you, know, and, you, well, don't want them, you don't want them because you don't want the legality and the issues that go along with it having and, to get the guy a cab ride home. Well, not only that, but you know what I've always said about a 99-cent margarita. You get what you pay for. Well, yeah, if your margarita is worth 99 cents, what does that say about your food? Food, yeah. So, uh, I, I, yeah, I'm a big proponent of we stay away from that no-no. Uh, that yeah. But uh, what I actually think is interesting, uh, back before I was doing the wine, as you know, when I was just into margarita machines and other things like right. that, I actually had a restaurant guy tell me that his uh, customers love his margaritas. 
Now, he was using not only tequila, but Everclear. And you know, you and I, yeah, you know how we feel about that. And, and he was proud of the fact, he said, they come in and they get one margarita and they're buzzed and they're happy. And I'm sitting here going, really? You're an idiot. Yeah, that's exactly yeah, what yeah, I'm I mean, thinking. You ain't going to tell him that, but you're an idiot. I mean, well, think about it. You're what, selling one well, margarita instead of three or four. Yeah, and you're selling it three dollars. He's not making any money. The customer's just getting plowed under for for nothing. And the guy, I mean, it's not a, it's not always about the money, but the guy just sitting there, he, he can only drink one, so he's a, you know, it's water and you know, it's just free chips and salsa. If he, even I mean, if you had not order food, so it's just dumb. I mean, it's just, I mean, well, let's say it. That's dumb. that's an idiot move. Yeah, you know, it, so, it is yeah. an idiot move, but. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know how it is. I mean, that's just how some people are and how they like to conduct their business. But uh, coming back that's to the not our customer. no, that is not our customer. You know, we don't have power drinkers in the taquerias that we deal with and a lot of the other. They're here to get a good beverage alongside of a good meal. Yeah, go side by side. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, and like our friends who are mambo, they do good. They do good <laughs> seafood. They do good margaritas and. And you know the, the shop is good. I mean, we're a little biased. We we're a little biased. We sell but, it yeah, all to them. But, but they, but they're really successful. And you can't drive by one of the restaurants on a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and they're the patios packed and the places. They're doing booming business. Right. They're about quality. And yeah. And well, and and I'm also at the same time. We're, we're, I'm going to pat ourselves on the back here because, uh, like yesterday, with these four clients that, like I said, four calls, four new signups, real easy. I start name dropping. I mentioned yep. Mambo's for one, and some of our other good clients who obviously well, Dennis, you know, the, the spot down in Galveston, yeah, just he's Dr. made a Rondas. he made a ton of money off this product. He makes we ain't gonna talk about that. No, but. but anyway, <laughs> and at that point they're like, really, this is what they're using? It's not tequila? No, sign me up. Uh, and, and, and that's how easy it is. I mean, because yep. uh, I did 150 miles yesterday. Uh, from north to south in yeah. Houston, in 150 miles, signed up for a count. Tell them who, who the count was way up on the north side. This yeah, is kind of cool. Yeah, for, for those of you who are familiar with Texas lore, uh, you all remember Mickey Gilly and the famous Gillies down in Pasadena that went on to become uh, famous well, in the, the urban, urban, cowboy. urban Cowboy. I right. was talking to Rebecca about that earlier, and she looked at me like the RCA dog, you know, like, huh, what? Well, she's young. Yeah, yeah she does. She, yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Anyway, yeah. You well, got to go watch. You got to rent that movie, Rebecca, just to say you've seen it now. So there you go. But anyway, the the real funny thing is, uh, as you know, Mickey has gone on to do a career pretty much in Branson. He's got a dinner theater. Yeah, he's and up everything there with Kenny there. Rogers and right. all those guys doing. Well, his wife theaters. and son Keith are here, and Keith's a performer also. He does a lot yeah. of local stuff. They recently moved, like kind of a lot of people did, from the south side of town to the north after Hurricane Ike. They just right. want to be safer, and they purchased a real old time. Honky tonk. I mean, a Texas honky tonk saloon. I mean, tonk uh, yeah. saloon. I mean this is, you would call this a beer joint. Okay, from the sawdust on the floor to the fact that there must be, I got to tell you, there's got to be a thousand racks from different gear that are suspended from the ceiling of this place. I told you, make a great horror movie. It really would. Yeah. And every other kind of stuff, bobcat, bear, you can imagine. Yeah, it's it's a it's it, a true. It, and and before even before they bought it, I think it was Henry's Hideout or Henry's Hideaway it, or something like right, that. Right, something like that. Up close and, to the uh, Renaissance Festival, there, phenomenal play. Been there forever. This October, it will have been there 73 years. Wow. They are celebrating their 73rd birthday. So anyway, to to make a long story short, the Gillies purchased it, and. Um, what they noticed is already they're doing great business because, you know, especially on the weekends, you know, they, they've got the Texas hoedown going on. Mm -hmm. uh, but they weren't seeing as many sales as they'd like to their, to their women, to be honest with you, to the women clientele. And, you know, this is, we've always had this discussion before, beer versus wine. Right. And uh, they want to diversify. They got one of the postcards. And uh, what's kind of funny is I actually had dealt with Mickey Gilly directly before on the restaurant he opened uh, in the south part of Texas, south part of Pasadena, excuse me. Uh, not too long ago, and had dinner with him actually, mm -hmm. uh, but that's a whole other story. But so anyway, they're they're doing this. They wanted to have some different drink options, and uh, they got our postcard, called me up, and you know within 24 hours yesterday, I'm I'm sitting in front of Joyce and Keith Gilly, and uh, they're signing up to put in margaritas to put them in the dance hall and saloon uh, for their clients. So. And, and it'll work. They'll sell them, and you know and. It, it, for those types of places, it will help the women's sales, but it'll help the sales overall, overall in general. Absolutely. I mean, because you and I both, when we go out and we drink lots of margaritas, and, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm a beer drinker. I drink beer, scotch, you know, that type of thing, and, and some tequilas, and I like that. And, um, you know, we'll talk about, I'll talk about this product here in just a minute about who's going to be on, you know, next week. So, 
Um, but anyway, it's it, it, it's a phenomenal product. Works for everybody. Drinks them and likes them at some time. Well, you know, it is the number one cocktail. Oh, margarita is the number one. Period. Hands mm -hmm. down. There ain't nothing can touch it. I, I mean, I bet number two so far away can't even see number one. So you're probably <laughs> correct. So. so. All right. Well, anything else you want to say about these products? Because otherwise, I'm going to make one of these things up and we'll have a drink. I think we should. Okay. Uh, I, I will say this, though, that the uh, – oh, before I forget, I don't know if I uh, ever told you this or maybe you saw it or didn't see it. Uh, one of our accounts, and I think I'll go ahead and mention them here, okay, uh, Snapper Jacks. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know yeah. they got written up in the Houston Chronicle as having one of the best margaritas yeah, in the yeah, city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. Wine account, agave wine account, Los Cabos. Reviewer did not even know. Could not tell the difference. Didn't even know. They wrote in and said they got a, one of the best margaritas in town, da, did, da, da, did not and even didn't even realize that it was yep. a wine-based margarita. So yeah. I thought, you know what, Con considering, I mean, we're in Houston. Yeah. We have uh, two things we're, we're known for. Mm -hmm. Steak, actually three things. Steak, seafood, and Mexican food. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, for you to be written up, now he's a seafood restaurant. Right. He is not a Mexican restaurant. Right. He is a seafood restaurant. He gets written up as having one of the best margaritas in the city by a professional food reviewer. Yeah. Come on, people. Good. What we got is pretty good. It works. It, it, it goes to Ted's legacy. Yeah. He, he, this is what he set out to do, and he has accomplished his goal. Yeah, I mean, Ted so. told me a story one time. I'm not going to ramble on about it and everything, but Ted told me a story about it one time that he actually, when he was trying to prove this product, he said he had to dig up an agave plant one time and send it to Washington D.C. to somebody at the ATF. I don't know if it was a, I don't know if, if that was a uh, an expanded story on Ted's behalf, but it wouldn't really surprise me with the, the you know our federal government. You know, the, they really want to see that what it's made from. Mm -hmm. So, but anyway, okay. Well, let's let's uh, let's make one up here. Let's uh, we'll make up a margarita here. Let's uh, rim it here a little bit. Little standard salt, my favorite. Yep. Nice little coarse grade of salt. And it ain't sticking. Right. Probably because I, my water dried up up here. Or, uh, oh, there that's you go. a little better. Yeah, better it ain't better. good, but it ain't bad either. So, all right. Then we're going to take. Now, like Darren was saying earlier, we usually double the amount of wine that you would for versus um, hard liquor. Versus hard liquor. So, and this and might help to have a. That glass up here too. So in in, in the state of Actually, Texas, you know what, it's, it's assumed that ice. in an eight ounce uh, <laughs> cocktail, if you're using hard liquor, you have at least one shot, which is a 1.25 ounce measurement of hard liquor. So generally, some people do 1.7 for one and three quarters, but it just but 1.25 is the standard it's minimum. The standard, yeah. So uh, my clients, a lot of times when they convert from wine, mm -hmm. we're going to double the the minimum. Yeah. So we're going to go to at least two and a half, and a lot of them just round mm -hmm. up to three. Yeah. Two. Don't be skimpy. Not if I'm drinking it. Three. There we go. Okay. Now, take a little uh, margarita mix here. Uh oh. This is just one of our uh, liquid cocktail mixes. It's not one of our higher ends. It's a more value oriented product, as we like to say. Yeah, value so oriented. It is good. Don't get it wrong. It's good, yeah, but it's not our top shelf, which is made with pre-dried lime. Right. And, you know, but but the, uh, let's do about two. Okay. We can get by with one and a half. Go ahead and round it up. I like a little flavor. Uh, but here's the thing. It, it's it's hard to shake powder. Easier to shake liquid. Yeah. Well, we can do it. I mean, you can break it down and make you it gonna, into a concentrate. A we do it. I like um, it a little smoother. You want a, okay, you want a little triple sec? Just a shot. We won't measure it, but we'll just put it in. How's that? Did this for long enough behind the bar. I still trust you. There you go. How's that? Take the edge off the boom boom. Come on, let's come on here. We got enough for two margaritas here. It's like you've got the maracas going. Yeah. <laughs> All right, don't do that again, please. <laughs> All right. I've worked for you for almost seven years, and I could have went seven more without seeing without that. Without seeing that, okay. Well, sorry. That's the way it works. <laughs> All right. There we go. Looks That's pretty good, doesn't it? For. That looks pretty good. Got a little bit of froth to it. Yeah, we're going to have enough here for... And for the day I had yesterday, at least one for me. Yeah. Well, let's pull another. Eh, how you drink this? out of a martini glass? Uh, I don't care. I'll drink out of anything. Salt? No, no salt for no me. No salt for you. No salt for me. 
one and puts it in the ice and they're ready to go home. But it's plenty it's cold. It's plenty cold. My hands over here freezing away. So. Well, I think in this case we have one. Cheers to Ted. And let's here's here's my friend Thaddeus John O'Toole, better known as Ted O'Toole, my friend and mentor and creator of all the just It just it really gets to me thinking that he's not around anymore and I can't get to him. So here's to you, Ted. Wherever you are. Mm, that's not bad. Never is. That ain't bad at all. Nope. So anyway, Los Cabos. Rebecca will put some links up on the website so you can find out a little more information about it if you if it's a product that will work for you. And um, keep in mind we had a really creative guy that created these products and put them together. And I can honestly say he was my friend, and I'm really gonna I'm really really gonna miss him. And um, anyway, you know ahead. before we get too modeled, I was gonna say uh, what are we doing next week? Oh, I, I see something there yeah. that you know I'm glad I like. You, I'm glad you said that. You know I like what you have right there. Yeah. We found this product. Some people here in Houston we stumbled onto, and it's really a high-end tequila, and Ted would appreciate this one too. But um, it's, how do you pronounce that? Riazul. Riazul tequila. And we're going to have them in here next week talking a little bit about the product and everything. And I'm a tequila guy, so I like tequilas. I like, well, high-end tequilas, high-end scotches and things like that. And Darren says, well, you got to try this. So I brought it in and I tasted it, and I was stunned. Um, and they'll talk about how they, how they make it and how it's oh, aged. And this and is the onion. You know. It's got a story. I mean, every yeah. cool thing. You know, we did Jaguar Vodka before, mm -hmm. which has the whole eco-friendly story, right. how it's created. Wait till you hear the story behind how Ria Zul came to the market. It's a local yeah. Houston story. Yeah. Rice graduate, MBA yeah. uh, business, Rice graduate guy came up with this. But it goes all the way back to the Mexican War of Independence, uh, hmm. where this started with his family. And uh, this is their Añejo, which you know I'm already hooked on. Uh, I have a bottle of the Blanco back home uh, that they were kind enough to grab me. And literally just about a week ago, the Reposado actually wow. hit the uh, store shelves. Oh, it's going to be hard to beat this in Yale, man. It's really well, I, good. I, I got to tell you, that is the tequila that drinks like a scotch. Yeah, oh, it's I mean, smooth. It I mean, is, I was oh. thinking, oh, this is dangerous. So so anyway, all right, well, they're coming. We'll get them in here next week to talk about this. Um, again, Ted, rest in peace, my friend, and uh, hope the good Lord blesses you and takes good care of you, and uh, I'll see you one of these days. One more time, Darren. Here's Ted. my friend Ted. Guys, remember, you never know when you might see me behind the bar or your local watering hole. Rest in peace, Ted. See ya.